Hi there, I'm a YouTuber with a stupid name, and I'm here to show you how to beat this son of a gun. The Sans fight is by far the hardest fight in the game, and one of the toughest bosses in gaming as a whole. So about a year ago, I decided to waste six months of my life, and probably a big chunk of my exam grade, to beat Sans Undertale, no hit. So, in this video, I'm going to be showing you how you can beat Sans, whether it's uh, for the first time, or you, you're insane enough to try a no-hit. Uh, I'm going to give you all the tips and advice that I've picked up over the six months of pain that it took me to beat it. So, are you ready? Let's go. Step one. Okay, first you're going to need to prepare your mind, okay? You can't just jump into these things. You've got to prepare. Generally for the Sans fight, I would recommend like a good decade of meditation in the Himalayas or something similar to that, you know, you know, you need to, you need to be prepared. If you just go in, uh, you, you're going to you're going to drop out. So, you just need like a decade of relaxation and preparation. Uh, for what's to come. So that's, that's step one, so I'll uh, see you in ten years and uh, we can we can move on to step two. Okay, into the actual gameplay. Almost every uh, guide uh, on how to kill Sans generally refers to how armor doesn't really mean anything. And on the face of it, that's, that's true. Sans doesn't seem to care about what defense you have or anything like that. He just hits you all the same. That's not quite true. So, so most guides will say use the burnt pan because it gives you four extra HP per healing item. But that's really not that much and there's actually armor that does help. Um, you can't get the Temi armor in this mode, that would be the best, but if you use the notebook and the cloudy glasses, they actually help you. And that this is a fact that no one seems to have realized. Um, but you can do a quick experiment to show that this works. If you just uh, start the Sans fight with normal armor, whatever you have, and just don't press any buttons, he'll slam you to the ground, he'll destroy you, and he will kill you in that attack. However, if you wear the torn notebook and the cloudy glasses, uh, you'll find that you actually survive the first attack. I'm not sure exactly how it works, but you, you do seem to take less karma damage, or maybe the in invincibility frames are slightly uh, sl uh, slightly longer. It's not quite clear, but it does work. You can try it yourself. Just uh, AFK for the first attack and see if you survive. Um, so yes, using the cloudy glasses and the taut notebook is actually the best gear to go into the sands fight with. Um, and it, it's far better than the 4 extra HP you get from the pan. Okay, moving on to items. Now items are a bit more straightforward. There's lots of guides telling you this. You want the butterscotch pie, that's a full heal. You want the instant noodles. Uh, and then you want most of uh, Burger Pants' items. You want one steak and then the rest legendary heroes. Now you could use snow snowman pieces. They are slightly better than legendary heroes. However, you've probably had to use those for the Undyne fight. So, and it's only 5 extra HP for um, snow pieces, so it really doesn't matter. So if your infantry looks like pie, noodles, and then steak, and then all legendary heroes, that is the best infantry to go into the fight with. Also, I will just add that I recommend putting the best healing items last in your infantry. This is uh, something I, I found out. Because, because you've got the harder attacks later on, uh, it's often best to put those uh, better healing items last in your infantry, so you use them last. Okay, moving on to the actual attacks. Um, I'm going to show you my strategy for beating Sans no hit. Um, and that should just give you some uh, good information on how you can beat it yourself. So the first attack, people often overcomplicate. People uh, jump all over the place, go left and right, up and down. You don't need to press the sideways arrows at all. Just press up and down. So at the start, he's going to slam you against the floor. Wait till you hit the floor and then immediately hold upwards. That will avoid the initial slam. Uh, and then you just need to tap down and then up to get through the bone wave. Uh, if you're pressing sideways, it's very easy to mess up that attack. 
And then for the next attack, the Gaster Blaster one, you need to center yourself dead center. Now if you've been using the sideways arrows, it's actually quite hard to center yourself. But if you've only used up and down, it's really easy because you're already aligned. Okay, moving on to the second attack. This one's just, uh, there's not really any strategy for this. You just need to feel your way. Um, it's not too bad. If you take like a little bit of damage here, it won't affect your chances in the fight too much. Uh, it is annoying for no hit purposes because just it's just such fine margins. Um, but if you just get into the rhythm, just practice it a lot, you should be fine. Okay, so the next one, this is the first one that people have a lot of trouble with in the fight. And my strategy is to tap up and then across um, at the same time. So I always move in a diagonal fashion. So I'll move diagonally three times one way and then diagonally three times the other way. Um, just high enough to clear the white bone and then stay still for the blue bone. It'll take a little bit of practice this one. This one's quite a hard one to get down. Um, Moving on to the fourth attack, this one's kind of muscle memory, it's just uh, jump heights again, uh, but this time it's variable heights and it's random heights. So honestly, j just practice this one. Generally, it's quite an easy attack once you get the hang of it. Okay, moving on to the next attack. This one is the Super Mario Maker attack. And this one honestly is the easiest one of the whole lot. Um, most people don't have trouble with this one because it moves quite slowly. Um, all you need to do is just make sure you don't fall in the bones at the bottom. Don't jump too high up and keep to the left of the screen so the final bone coming across doesn't get you. But as long as you don't fall in the very bottom bones, um, you shouldn't take much damage at all. And this should be by far the easiest attack of the, of the whole fight. Okay, next attack you have the slightly harder version, and it, it is a fair bit harder. I start off with a massive jump to the right, I just hold up and then right, and that should land you on the first platform fine. And then you want to jump over the high platform, don't even bother landing on it, just, just jump clean over it and land on the third platform to come along. Then you need to take one massive jump to the right and land on top of the platform. A good tip here is to move across to the next platform. You just want to hold sideways. You don't need to jump here, just, just hold right and you'll slide right onto it. And then you just need to tap up and right again to get onto the next platform. Once you get the rhythm of this, it's not too bad. Um, it is quite a challenging attack. Moving on to the next attack, this one has lots of platforms moving side to side. Uh, generally you need to uh, move in a circular fashion here. So stay on the bottom for as long as you can and then when you get the chance, when the middle lane is clear, do a massive jump to the right and then just move sideways along the bottom, move to the left along the bottom and then a massive jump to the right whenever it's clear up above on the middle layer. You shouldn't ever have to go to the top layer on this one, although you might if there's an emergency, whatever. So my strategy on this one you'll see on the screen. Um, I just have a set way of doing it all the time and then at the end of it you can do a massive jump before the last set of bones so you can avoid that last attack. Um, moving on we have uh, Gaster Blasters coming in from the side. This one's okay once you get the rhythm. Uh, generally I just stick to the bottom and middle layers. Yeah, stick on the bottom as long as there's no blasters there and then jump up to the middle layer whenever anything comes along. And then, then you can just judge whether it's safe to go to the bottom layer or whether you need to stay on the middle layer. Okay, now we got the uh, attack from two rounds ago, but it's even harder. So I, I, uh, I use a slightly more complicated strat here, you'll see on the screen. Um, it involves uh, two quite tricky jumps for th this is for the no hit purposes um, but if once again if, you, if you're just trying to beat sounds normally I recommend just sitting on the platform taking a little bit of damage you won't take that much uh, just shift side to side ever so slightly just tap tap side to side and you should be good on this um, and once again right at the end you can employ the big jump so you don't fall into the bones below Next we have uh, an attack that's similar to the second attack, however it's even faster. 
And this isn't necessarily a bad thing because the moment you hit the floor, you just have to jump again. So it actually helps you with the timing a little bit. Okay, this next attack is a really easy one once you know the secret. Just take a massive jump to the left immediately. Just hold down up and left. And then just scoot along. Just keep tapping right until you get all the way to the right of the screen. And then you take a massive jump to the left. Um, and you should be able to skip all the cycling uh, in the middle. Then at this point, it just repeats attacks. So uh, it repeats the last few t attacks uh, several times. So then you should have the break pretty soon. Okay, so then you get to the break in the fight, and what you want to do is spare sand. And <laughs> this is where things get pretty insane. So Sans is first going to hit you with a random attack. However, this random attack isn't that random. Almost all of the attacks involve just jumping straight up. Um, so you have the uh, normal bone jumps, you have the jump, uh, the one where you have to jump up really quickly, you have the one where you have to hold still and then jump up, and then you have the giant uh, sideways jumps. So you kind of can be prepared for this one because all of them involve jumping up, just make sure you time it right, and then it, uh, involve a sideways jump if it's the sideways one. Um, so yeah, as long as you're alert for this, you should be fine. At this point, Sans will uh, introduce his first menu bone. This one at this point is uh, not too hard to deal with. You just uh, time, just make sure you don't forget uh, when you're hitting fight uh, that there's the menu bone there. Next, we have all the small gaster blasters. This one can be a bit of a pain if you don't know what you're doing. I generally like to just move uh, sideways uh, in a sideways fashion and then all the blasters above and below you will miss you. Uh, moving on to the next one, this is a slightly harder randomizer, it involves a few more things. First we have the bone wave, uh, but this, this is kind of similar to the very first attack, you just need to tap down and then tap up again. Uh, you also have the this weird attack where two bones coming at you from two sides. And you just this is just reaction timing. Um, you just need to move around. Now, if you realise that you are going to get hit by this and you haven't reacted in, in time, what you can do is move to the side and then move sideways through the bone that's coming at you. So you will take some damage, but the way you move means you won't take that much damage there. Okay, so the next attack involves uh, the gravity slam. It's one of my least favourite attacks. But it, the first two are actually pretty easy. So this one starts off really slow. Just make sure you wait till you hit the wall and then press the opposite direction. Uh, now there is a bit of a secret to this one. If you have uh, a certain type of keyboard, you can press all the keys at once and it will skip the attack for you. Um, it's not something I did, but um, it definitely makes it easier. These first two gravity slams are actually pretty easy. Um, just make sure uh, you're reacting fine and it, it isn't not too bad. The one that comes later is brutal. So that's the one I would actually cheat on if I had the chance. Um, also at this stage you, you'll have seen that there's more menu bones. So they'll come across the bottom of your screen and they'll cause havoc. Um, the secret to beating these is the moment you get your menu heart up after an attack, you want to move one to the right to the act menu, wait a little bit, and then move back. And this will time it so uh, you'll miss both the bottom menu bones and also the side menu bone. Generally, if you wait, just pause after every time you uh, move across one, uh, it generally times it so you miss them. So the next attack uh, is the giant gaster blasters. And these are, in a way, are slightly easier than the smaller ones, because although the beam is bigger, they're actually slower. So, once again, I, li I like to move in a sideways fashion when I'm not really sure what I'm doing. Um, but generally, you can kind of see where the Gaster Blaster is aiming, and then just move perpendicular to where it's going. That means you should always miss this. Okay, so the next one involves bones coming up the side of your screen. So what you want to do is move in a circular fashion. Next we have the hardest of the random uh, attacks. So this one will employ every single attack against you. Um, so you have to really be on the ball for this one and just 
try and react the best you can. There's not really any strategy I can help you out with this, uh, apart from any like individual attacks that I already mentioned. Then we have the elephant in the room. This one is by far the hardest to no hit. This one took me so long to beat. It, it wasn't even funny. Um, yeah, this the speed of this one is unreal. So you have to react so, so quickly. Um, some people say watching Sansa's hand for this actually helps rather than just watching the, the box. Just watch where he's slamming his hand. Personally, it it didn't really help me, but some people say it, it works. Um, but yeah, I just had to brute force this one. When he slams you in the same direction, the timing is so difficult. It's, uh, it's kind of crazy. Um, so if you want to use that trick where you hold all your keys down at once, I really don't blame you for this one. Okay, so then he'll just cycle through attacks. He'll either hit you with a random one, he'll hit you with the gravity slam, or the giant gaster blaster one, until you get to the point where he says, um, now would be a good time to die. That's the last of the regular attacks. You hit him again, then it initiates the final attack. <laughs> the final attack generally in my experience, it'll beat you about nine times with that last attack. You'll have to go back and do it and beat it for the tenth time to actually win. Um, and that's with the regular run and the no hit. I got to the last attack with the no hit so many times. I think it was like nine times. So what do you have to do? First, you have four gravity slams um, at the speed of the previous one. So it, it's pretty difficult, but it doesn't go on for too long. Uh, you can use the trick for the holding all the keys down if you want to. And then you have the vertical bones where you have to move in a circular fashion. So far this isn't too bad. As long as you have some health, you should be fine. And then you'll be slammed against the left wall and then the fall begins. Uh, <laughs> this is one of the coolest attacks. It's so cool. What you have to do is you first you want to center yourself dead in the middle of the screen. And then you're going to start by moving down. Uh, the wave starts by moving downwards. And then you just need to keep that wave motion. You just need to hit up, down, up, down, up, down, one after the other. Uh, getting the timing is very difficult for this. Fortunately, the speed you're moving at means you don't actually take too much damage if you mess up. But it is uh, quite a significant bit of damage considering what's coming next. So then you just keep going and then you hit the wall, make sure you hit left the moment you hit the wall. Don't hit left before you hit the wall, uh, only hit it um, once you've hit the wall. Then you get this segment where you have to move out of the bones. This is the same every time, so you should be able to learn this and have it ready. Then you get the pinwheel. The pinwheel is the last attack in the fight and by far the most challenging, I'd say. First I would start at the bottom of the pinwheel and then move up to the right and then keep them don't get too close to the center is the most important thing just make sure you keep your distance from the center and then just honestly I don't know just just hope at this point uh, as long as you get into this part with like a decent amount of health however you should have a decent chance um, because it's generally the karma that does the most damage in this fight um, so as long as you keep out the Gaster Blasters for like a decent amount of this attack and you come in with like, I don't know, 40 HP say, you have a decent chance of beating this. Just stay relaxed, try not to freak out when you get there. Just focus, relax and see if you can get to the end of it. So yeah, that, that's, that's the story, that's how you can beat Sans and if you do, you are a terrible person. Uh, but in the meantime, thanks for watching. Um, I kind of want to do a few more Undertale videos just because I love the game, but I know most of my audience like Minecraft, so we'll do a bit of both. Why not? Best of both worlds. Anyway, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Hope you <laughs> let me know if you beat him. Um, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!